Always a beautiful morning when we're joined by our friends from First Federal. Dick Belcher joins us. Dick, good morning. How are we? Uh, we're we're excellent. Yeah. You are wearing some blue today. It's a chilly weather uh, day out there too. Did you bring this upon us? Are you the man to blame? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just looking for someone that I can point a finger at for the weather. Well, <laughs> I was in charge of last Tuesday, oh, and it was really nasty. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> well, it's going to be a great weekend. We've got a lot of things going on. We're going to talk about some of those things. And at the bank today, we're having uh, Jeans Day today again. We, <laughs> we do that occasionally. And uh, if you uh, donate towards uh, the United Way program, why, then you can, you can wear jeans. And by the way, I'd like to bring you up to date on uh, what First Federal's done so far uh, in fundraising. We've raised uh, twenty five thousand three hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, last year it was twenty four thousand and change, so we surpassed that and still going. Now the the United Way goal is a hundred thousand dollars, so you can you can do the math there that uh, First Federal's contributed about twenty five. Or 28 percent of the gold so far so that's good uh impeachment inquiry is on that's just like watching paint dry yeah that's been going on what since he got elected about <laughs> so it's been a process well officially the last two days <laughs> yeah. but it'll go on and on and on red for ed is coming up uh next tuesday uh, I understand that they're expecting 13,000 teachers uh, at Indianapolis. Uh, they're uh, lobbying for higher pay with the legislation uh, soon starting. IU ended their drought of being the longest power, uh, power five conference school to not be ranked in the top 25. That was in 1994. Who holds the title now? Boy, that's a nice one that you want to <laughs> Okay, Tanner. Tanner Lee, tell us a little bit about what's happening in the sports world. Yeah, we got quite a bit going on, um, locally and, and nationally, of course. Uh, girls' basketball season's well underway. The Lady Zebras picked up their first win of the season against Caston uh, last Saturday. Um, they play Northwood tomorrow. One o'clock. Uh, will WI have the call? We'll be here. We'll be here. Yep. All right. So, uh, color in on the local college thing. Uh, we got football and basketball going on this time of year. Purdue actually got a football win last weekend. Uh, they need them all. Too. It, wa it wasn't the easiest, but they beat Northwestern twenty-four uh, twenty-two. It's improved to four and six. So a bowl game could still be possible. It's going to be tough, but. Oh, well, we just got to beat. Wisconsin and IU. Yeah, just haven't been Wisconsin since 2003, but uh, yeah. I guess we're due. And it doesn't help that Wisconsin yeah. game's on the road. And yeah, right senior day, <laughs> they run pretty well, but yeah, you never know. That's why they play the game. Yeah. Purdue's got a bye week this week, so hopefully they can get some guys healthy for that. Uh, Dick mentioned Indiana in the trivia. Uh, Indiana is ranked 25th now. They're 7-2. and two. They play at Penn State. Tomorrow is 8-1. Penn State's a 14-point favorite in that game. And then Notre Dame's ranked 15th. They beat Duke 38-7. They host number 24, Navy, tomorrow, who's 7-1. Notre Dame's an 8.5-point favorite. But uh, Notre Dame has not sold the game out. They'll break their sellout streak dating back to 1973. So. And who has the uh, uh, sellout record currently? Nebraska. The Nebraska. Oh, I was yeah. going to guess yeah. Nebraska, or I was going to guess Alabama, actually, yeah. so I've been wrong there. But that doesn't surprise me. There's not a lot to do in Nebraska, <laughs> so. Um, uh, college basketball, we had a big upset go on this week, and it actually happened from a school out of our state of Indiana here. Evansville upset number one Kentucky, 67-64. Uh, they were 26-point underdogs going into that game, and... Um, Pretty much led the whole game, so it was really impressive. They went wire to wire to win that. Tell us about the Evansville coach. Uh, yes, his name is escaping me this morning, but he's a former player at Kentucky. I don't know the last name is McCarty. I'm yeah, sure the first uh, I, I know he's new at Evansville. He hadn't been there too long. They run a very fast tempoed offense. He likes to run and gun, get down there and shoot the ball as fast as possible. And he made a comment after the game that besides winning the national championship, this was the greatest feeling he could feel as a coach, so pretty neat. 
Um, and then we had Purdue, Indiana, and Notre Dame in action this past week. Uh, Purdue lost at Marquette Tuesday or on Wednesday night, 65-55. They're up 13 and a half, and they just had a really bad second half. Yeah, it was, that was rough to watch. They they need somebody to not only hit free throws, but somebody to step up and want the ball late in games. And yeah. hopefully they'll find out as the year goes on. But they got some tough games coming up in the next few weeks. So, but tomorrow's not one of them. They host Chicago State, who's one and two, and normally is not very good. So. And Indiana beat North Alabama on Tuesday, 91-65. They host Troy tomorrow, who's 0-2. So Indiana's stacking up the wins with the lesser opponents before they get in the tougher part of the schedule. And Notre Dame beat Howard on Tuesday, 79-50. They host Marshall tonight, who is 1-1. One one. Bears beat the Lions over the weekend. They travel to L.A. to play the Rams. That will be your Sunday night football game. Rams are seven-point favorites. And the Colts lost to the Dolphins, 16 to 12. They host the Jaguars, who are four and five on Sunday. Adam Vinatieri is still the Colts' kicker, even though they brought other guys in to try out. Yeah, so they brought in four this week, I think. And you know, it's not a good thing when your kicker's in the headlines this much usually. Yeah. So we'll we'll see how he does on Sunday. I did see the other day. Apparently, he and Sanchez and Rhodes, who are like the three, the long snapper and the holder, they've all worked on stuff. And apparently, it was a timing issue. So. Well, I think they're running out of excuses. Though, yeah, so I mean, when you miss honest. five or six extra points in a year, something something's yeah. going wrong there. So I think it's safe to say, even if he makes it through this year, he will not be back next year. More, so. more than likely. Well, gosh, he needs the time off. Yeah, he. I mean, he's he's pretty old for an NFL player, forty six. So not not too many players play that long. I uh, got some tidbits here. Oh this no, wait, but tell us about the brawl last night. Oh, there was a big fight last night in the Steelers. Um, Browns game at the very end of the game, it saw uh, uh, Browns superstar defensive lineman Miles Garrett take uh, Steelers quarterback Mason Rudolph's helmet off and swing it at him, and it connected. Uh, yeah, in my opinion, he should be done for the year. I mean, it, it should be a pretty substantial fine and being penalty, but we'll see what the NFL does. You never know. It took him three or four years to finally suspend Vontez Burfitt for a whole year, so. Yeah. We'll, we'll see, but no no, uh, no room for that. Not necessary at all. So. Yeah, I did like, though, post-game, did you hear Baker Mayfield's comments? He actually, the quarterback of the Browns said that's unacceptable yeah. as a team. We we can't do that, and Miles has to be better than that. I mean, so. that could have been a really scary incident. That could have really done a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. so. I do have some tidbits here this morning. On this day in 1777, the Articles of Confederation uh, was approved by the Continental Congress. I feel like that's in my tidbits quite a bit. <laughs> Different things about the articles, but on this day in 1969, Wendy's opened in Columbus, Ohio. Founder Dave Thomas, of course, opened the first Wendy's restaurant. And on this day in 2013, uh, Sony launched the PlayStation 4, and on the first day it was out, it sold 1 million units. It's a pretty big number. And today is National Clean Out Your Refrigerator Day, uh, National Spicy Hermit Cookie Day. I can honestly t say I don't know what a spicy hermit cookie yeah. is. Well, I, uh, I bet one of our guests does. <laughs> I've heard of a hermit crab. Is that I have. What it's supposed I to be? don't know. I'm right there with you, John. That's the only kind of hermit. Oh, I feel like crab cookies. I try to avoid. Uh, yeah, that doesn't sound too good to me. <laughs> but it's also National America Recycles Day. Philanthropy Day and I Love to Write Day. So okay. there you go. Thank you, Tanner. You're welcome. The Rochester Rotary Club is doing their annual fruit sale again this year. The order deadline is today, and all proceeds go towards purchasing shoes for children of Fulton County. You can call 223 8191 to place orders for more information. Fulton County Crafters 40th Annual Fall Craft Show is tomorrow from 9 to 2 at the Fulton County 4-H Fairgrounds. Akron Lions Club is holding a fish fry tomorrow from 4 to 6 at the uh, Akron Community Center. Cost is $9 a pound. Let's have some flowers this morning. Uh, to RHS uh, Student Council, they raised over $550 for the Fulton County Animal Adoption and Education Center. Congratulations to them. 
Veterans of Foreign Wars for uh, providing $100 to Shop with a Cop program. Also, those involved in the uh, Veterans Day uh, ceremony on the courthouse lawn last Monday, uh, flowers to them. <clears throat> flowers also to uh, the county and city snow removal crew. They were all over that this this week when we got a couple three inches of snow and uh, that makes it a lot easier for everybody. Some uh, flowers to uh, Kim Landis. Uh, she takes care of the flowers and, uh, and the Fraser firs uh, along Main Street. Takes care of changing them, watering them, and does, does a great job <clears throat> there. Okay, in money news, uh, Dow yesterday was pretty flat, close to 27781 Daisy Plus launched on Tuesday. Disney with, Plus, yep. Huh? Disney just, Plus. Yeah, that's right, just thank you. <laughs> you all right. Uh, Disney Plus launched on Tuesday with a massive library of popular shows and movies from Pixar, Di Disney, Star Wars, Marvel, and more. Disney is poised to be Netflix's biggest competitor. Yeah, the streaming wars have begun, so uh, I know quite a few of my friends who have already got the Disney Plus yeah. subscription this week and said it's great, so okay. we'll see. Dean Foods, which we're all familiar with around here, has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Ah, man, that's, uh, that's uh, something else. Uh, the, the reason for that is, there's, I think there are a lot of reasons. One of the biggest reasons is the consumption in the U.S. Uh, of individuals for milk is down considerably. For instance, in, in year 2018, uh, every uh, citizen of the U.S. Con consumed 146 pounds of milk per person, and that's down 39% for the last 40 years. If you take uh, 40 years ago, you know, production uh, in, in the prices of uh, dairy products was uh, really good, and I guess that, that's uh, the reason. Interest rates pretty flat, not much happening uh, uh, this week. Uh, we did lower uh, interest rates on uh, certain mortgages, uh, an eighth, and uh, but uh, things stayed pretty calm. Okay, at First Federal, come in today and see us. We're open until 5 p.m. and tomorrow from uh, 8.30. Tell us about some of the products that we have, some new products. Uh, yeah, one, one new product I think uh, people are always curious about is, you know, how can I give money to somebody pretty quickly in a safe and con convenient way uh, by person-to-person -person payments, I should say. And, and we launched a few uh, months ago a partnership with Zelle, and I actually just used this this week myself. I split a pizza with one of my friends, and I paid for it. He said, you know, I'll just send you a Zelle payment. So he sends me half of the purchase for the pizza over the phone, and I got it within a couple minutes. Got an email and a text message that verified that I got paid and transferred right into my account. So Sounds like you got a good friend there. Yeah, yeah. Paid you right away. About, about time. He, he might still owe me a couple times. But, <laughs> uh, no, and it's a, it's a really safe, easy way to, um, to transfer uh, payments from person to person. And you can do it right from our First Federal Savings Bank mobile app. Just make sure you're signed up with Bill Pay. And then you can find the Zelle uh, icon right there within the app and then the other person you're trying to get money from or um, giving money to they don't even have to uh, have a Zelle account set up you can uh, you just need their email address or phone number and you can send them a link to give them an op their opportunity to sign up for it so but their bank does have to be a Zelle bank so. we offer many different mortgage products USDA FHA conventional loans one-step construction loans Premier first time home buyer loans and more. Our loan originator, Ben Dalton, or John Schaefer here in Rochester, uh, can provide you with more details. We offer simply free checking accounts and simply free business checking accounts. Uh, when you open a new checking account, we, you will get a free crock pot carrier. Crock pot carrier for a couple more weeks, and okay. then, then, then we'll have an exciting. Uh, option of uh you can you have two gifts you can choose from you choose oh, one gift well oh, don't tell them what it is i'm not i'm not okay. spoiling the surprise yes. we don't want more mm -hmm. <laughs> we offer commercial lending for business co uh, 
contact Lindy Breeden for more information. We also offer financial services. Contact Mark Lubo or Brian Bell today for more information. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Borrowers must meet underlying guidelines. We are a member of FDIC and an equal housing lender. And our NMLS number is 3999 or 27. Well, we got a couple very uh, esteemed guests this morning. Sheriff, <laughs> glad, welcome. Glad to have uh, you here with us, uh, Sheriff Chris Sailors and also Charlie Swain. We're going to talk about uh, some. Uh, an upcoming event, uh, which is uh, Trot with the Cop. Tell us about that. Absolutely. Uh, Trot, Trot with the Cop was uh, an idea that was come up with here about uh, 30, 45 days ago. Um, it's part of a fundraising campaign for Shop with the Cop that we do annually through the local fraternal order of police. Okay, Charlie, why are you involved in this? Are you good <laughs> friends of the cops? And <laughs> I'm always involved with anything that would help kids to be more active, and I've promoted it at both my elementary schools and encouraged my students to participate because this is a way that they can show kindness and that they can show a way of giving back to our community. And many of our students benefit from this program, and they're thrilled that they're going to be able to do it again this year. Okay, uh, all right, give us some of the details. When is it and how much does it cost? It's $20 and it is, we'll start at the St. Joseph Catholic Church and it will be the same route that we used when we did the Dick Gottschalk Jingle Bell Run. So people would be kind of familiar. We stay on that side of Main Street. We don't cross over at all. And it's a, an out and back course and we will be, it's a 3.1. You can walk it or you can run it. It starts at 9.30 on Saturday, or November 23rd. And at, when you finish, you are invited to have soup with us that one of our patrons has donated and soup and crackers and enjoy some camaraderie with other runners. Okay, Sheriff, uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, shop at the cop. Uh, what's the background and how long you been doing this? We've been doing this for over 20 years. Um, a lot of the Fraternal Order of Police lodges around the state, uh, around the country do this. Uh, we've done it here locally uh, well over 20 years now. Um, we've um, raised funds through donations. Uh, we have a, a call campaign um, in the last couple of years. Uh, we, we've taken that back over locally. And so all the funds that are, are donated are 100% stay here and are used for the, for the kids. Uh, the um, last year um, we took well over 200 kids shopping, um, and uh, all the police officers, both city, county, and the other agencies, state police, conservation, that um, get involved, and and it's really. Uh, pretty neat to, to see the, these kids, you know, uh, it builds a good public relations with police and, 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 and children today and so forth. So. Well, that's a great program and you guys have done a great job. I, uh, since we, we got the sheriff here, I, I can't let you go without asking a little bit about the new jail. Uh, give us a, an update on that. Well, just quickly, uh, we've still continued to have several meetings on the design and so forth, and the commissioners at their last meeting went ahead and approved uh, for the uh, building corporation, which is required under statute for a project like this for the bonding purposes. Uh, we have a meeting this coming Monday, it's a pre-bid meeting, and uh, I'm going over everything and put a meeting with potential bidders, I guess and uh, it'll be going out to bid, and we should have those bids back by mid-December. Now I get a, uh, questioned a lot about the old jail. What are the plans for the old jail? That's still up in the air right now, Richard. Uh, there's been a lot of different ideas, and you know, bear in mind that uh, when we started all this, the feasibility study was done, and, and it was gonna be a, a considerable amount of money just to bring everything up to date in the tune of about uh, 12 to $16 million. So um, it, there, there's been
been some ideas thrown out that we could use that as a work release center, we could use it as a community correction center. Um, with the, the trend now for, for rehabilitation, um, there's a possibility that that could be looked at for uh, uh, treatment type situation. Okay, uh, so to, to be determined. To be determined. Okay, all right. Well, there's a lot of options there, and then there's also an option to just uh, tear it down. Well, that's been suggested too. Yeah, so, yeah, but sure. And sure. Charlie, I, I know you do a lot of work with the kids, and uh, tell us about some of the programs that you, you're involved in. I know you have walking to school, and you've got uh, girls running, and tell us about some of those programs. Well, I, um, I do a walk-to-school program in the fall and in the spring. We meet at the public library, and we walk, uh, we walk three days a week. And the kids really enjoyed it because some of them live close by. Some of them are dropped off by their parents. And they could be dropped off at school, but they'd rather walk. And I, I'm all in favor of kids being more active. And, and we do a, a Girls on the Run program, which will registration will begin on... January the 1st for our girls and that's a self-esteem and self-confidence program that we encourage young girls to do because the, our kids in grades 3, 4, and 5 are so influenced by others that we want them to be able to make their own choices and decisions as opposed to having someone else do it for them. And it creates a, a good feeling for them and a little bit of unity. They feel like they belong with other girls. and. At the completion of that in May, we do a 5K run. And so we do a 5K run at the completion of our running club also in, in the spring. And in that one, we take the girls and boys to Indianapolis and they run as part of Kid Fit in conjunction with the mini marathon. Okay, uh, about how many kids would be involved in those programs? Well, our Girls on the Run program will probably have about 20 girls this year and it's a registration and there's a, a fee involved but Girls on the Run has never turned down any girl for not having enough money to participate. And there are, we've raised money, Chris Hunting is very involved with me in this and we've raised money throughout our community and we just found out last night we received a thousand dollars from the Community Foundation to help support our young girls to be able to be part of this program. Yeah, the Community Foundation is always around, uh, seems Help like there's some money. Yep, they're always there. That's, uh, that's great. Okay, now, tell us uh, again about the uh, Trot with the Cop. When is it and, and how do they get signed up? <laughs> Trot with the Cop will be on Saturday, November 23rd. The race will begin at 9.30 and registration begins at 8.30 at the St. Joseph Catholic Church Hall. And the fee is $20. The participants will receive a long sleeve shirt with, of course, a turkey running, which is kind of uncommon for most turkeys, I think. And the, uh, oh, there will I don't be, know. I've changed my <laughs> I have to. <laughs> there will be uh, awards for each of the age groups that we've designated, as well as participation, and the kids will have a good time. Okay, uh, Sheriff uh, Chris. Tell us again about the, the distribution. How, how do you select the, the kids that can participate? We've, um, over the years, we've reached out to all the different uh, schools that we service here in Fulton County. So um, Akron, Tippie Valley School District, um, Rochester, Gaston, uh, Culver. Um, we have some students that go to the Culver schools. And uh, uh, Diddy Price, who's the president, really ramrodded this over the years. He's a retired uh, Rochester police uh, officer. Um, been very passionate about this program. And, and uh, so we get with the school counselors, um, the school systems, also Head Start and some other agencies. And uh, they, they give us a list and we make contact. And, and then, uh, again, we, we will do our shopping always the second Saturday in December so this year will be December 14th uh, we go down to Walmart um, and uh, we have different times the, the families come in and, and are able to go shopping with uh, police officers sheriff's deputies and and my my girls over the years I've been involved with this uh, 
they're both, they live up in the Fort Wayne uh, now and they come home every Saturday or when we do this to help help out. And uh, what's really neat too is the last couple of years we've also had some some groups like the Caston FFA um, made up uh, a bunch of soft uh, Christmas stockings with cookies and different things and, and handed out to the kids too. So um, they, they consider that part of their projects too and it helps helps them meet their project requirements for their clubs and agencies. Without mentioning cookies, it brings up the hermit cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Good lead in for you. Can you tell us about that, Charlie? No, that's not my deal. <laughs> not your, oh my god. We got to do some research. I then. guess so. Okay. <laughs> Personally, oh. I like snickerdoodles. So. Yeah, I do. Me too. Yeah. So, okay. you and Santa Claus. Yeah, me and Santa Claus. <laughs> okay. Chris and Charlie, thank you for stopping by this morning and bringing us up to date on uh, Trot with the Cop coming up soon. Thank you for inviting Thanks. us. You're welcome. Okay, our trivia this morning is IU ended their drought of being the longest Power Five conference school to not be ranked in the top 25. Who holds the title now? Is it Purdue, Kansas, or Illinois? Uh, well, I don't want to say Purdue, uh, so I'm going to go Illinois. I'm going to say Purdue. You you probably were looking at Mike. Well, <laughs> just knowing you're a producer. Just, as a Purdue like, fan, I yeah, couldn't bring myself yeah, to I know say it. Purdue. Yeah, that's surprising. The, that's fine. something to, that we're very proud of. Uh, with Tanner. Anyway, Purdue, uh, 2007. 2007, yeah. yeah so that, Okay, let's close with this statement by Arnold Glass Glassow, American author. He says, laughter is a tranquilizer with no side effects. You like that, Sheriff? Yeah, I do. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, John.